So okay. let's take a look and let's review our questions about setting. All right. So let's take a look. So what are the two so questions, questions that setting answers? OK, question number one. Is when when does the story take place? This is the first question that our setting should answer when when does a story take place? So again, for example, this could be does it take place in the past? the present or the future. This might be important for the story so we know what time period it happens in. Season is another important piece of this. When does the story take place? If it's winter or fall or summer or time uh, or spring and the time of day if it takes place in the morning or at night. OK, and how does this add to the story? So everyone take a moment and think of how might one of these things add to a story based on what we've talked about. Let's see, Sandy, how does these things add to a story? Um, maybe um, uh, if the story in the past, you add in a long time ago or if the story is present uh it as a uh, now or yeah the story now now and in the future yeah you say in the future great yeah exactly so it kind of gives you an idea gives you more information about what might we might expect as the listener or the reader right it might give us more information on um, what might be happening. So, for example, if it's in the past, maybe it makes us understand, oh, you know, this happened in an ancient time or ancient um, a civilization. OK, what do I know about that? And that might help you understand more about the characters or more about the plot. All right, great. Leo, how might a season add to the story? Um, any season can be. I think. Say that one more time, Leo. Looks like you might yeah, have he, he yeah. That's OK. All right, will you help out, Leo? How does a season add to the story? How does the setting of a season uh, help us understand more about the story? Uh, 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 in different conditions, we we can use uh different season. Right. So, in with different seasons is different weather, right? So yes. also uh, maybe that different weather may helps, you know, puts those conditions onto the characters or the plot. If we remember our example of Romeo and Juliet, remember it was very, very hot because it was summertime and that helped, um, that made the characters act in some ways. So, yes, the season can contribute to how uh, the different conditions of these things. Good. Okay, let's move on to our second question. 
Question number two that our setting answers is where does the story take place? So this might be a country or land, climate such as the desert or somewhere really cold like the Arctic or specific places like schools or maybe a grocery store or somewhere else, one specific place. OK. All right. And how does this add to the story? Let's see. Um, Leo, how do does this add to the story? How does this affect our plot or characters? Um, maybe their way, their ways. Oh, say and, that one more time. Oh, uh, maybe their ways. Wear some clothes for climate. Oh yeah, okay. What they wear? Good. Yes. Yeah. So it can um. Maybe what the character wears and that kind of will add to maybe how they do things or where they might go. Good. Yes. So what someone does or wears in a very hot climate like a desert is very different than what someone in a cold climate like the Arctic might do. Great. Good example. So yeah, and these different places where the story takes place again can tell us a lot about what might happen or who the characters are. So for example, if our story is at a school, we can expect students, some teachers, maybe a story that takes place in the classroom or about these characters or common things that might happen in the school. We know what to expect of it as the reader. All right, great. Nice job, everyone. OK, let's move on. So the other day we started to create our own stories. Does everyone have uh, their. What they wrote the other day. If not, you can either get that paper you started the other day or we can get a new one. Whatever you have nearby. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to continue creating our own stories. So we started the other day by picking a setting. It could be any setting. It could be from one of our examples that we saw the other day. Or it could be one that you pick um, from your own imagination or maybe you're inspired by a setting that you saw somewhere else. And then we're going to answer some questions about the setting. We started with our first one the other day, which was what do you see? So let's take a look. So what are words or phrases that describe the and we're going to fill in the blank here. Uh, Ray, can you read this word right here under number one? Sight. Sight. Great. So. What are words or phrases that describe the site in this setting? So what do you see? So for example, what colors do you see? Are there people or animals? Um, is there furniture? So we started with that the other day and let's take another minute now to think of our setting, the one we chose and to write down a few more things that you might see in the setting that you chose. OK, so everyone take a moment. To write these things down. And it, there's no one right answer. We can be creative. OK. Great. Bridget, could you give them uh, a couple of your examples? Yes, absolutely. So for example, if we think about our classroom, 
So our uh, classroom, there is what you see in a classroom. So I would see a chalkboard. I would also see a desk, a teacher's desk. I would see some desks for students. I might see a lot of the color white, the color white on the tiles on the floor and maybe the walls or the ceilings as well. I might see some friendly faces, some familiar faces of friends or other students. So that's one example. Thinking of another example, if I'm in a park, I might see lots of green grass or green leaves on trees. I also might see a lot of animals like birds or squirrels or rabbits. I also might see um, some sort of water like a river or a lake. Those are some examples. Okay. Maybe some flowers as well in the park. <laughs> and touch. Oh, yes. So we'll get to that next. Yeah. So moving on to number two. So what are some things, words or phrases that describe what you can touch in this place? So thinking about our park again. So sing things you might touch the soft grass. OK, that might be one soft grass. How does it feel? The cool breeze of wind is another thing that you can touch or feel. OK. Um, if we're in the classroom, maybe the dust of some chalk. Or how the chair feels, maybe it's very hard when you sit in a chair in a classroom. So take a couple moments to think about um, the things you can feel or touch in this setting. All right, and then number three, sounds. Some sounds you might hear in these two settings. So for example, in the classroom, we might hear someone tapping a pen on their desk. Or they might, oh, thank you. Uh, someone might be tapping a pen on the desk. We might hear a lot of papers being flipped in books. Might hear some people talking about subjects like English or history. In a park, these sounds might be very different. Birds chirping, for example. Also, what might you hear? The wind blowing, people laughing, maybe the water near the uh, from the river that we saw might you might hear the river flowing. OK. All right. So take a moment to think about the things you might hear in the setting you chose. OK. And let's talk about smell. The things you might smell in different places or settings. So for example, in a park, if you smell the fresh air in the park or the smell of flowers, maybe a specific kind of flower like a rose. All right. In a classroom, maybe it smells like books. Or maybe you can smell chalk or maybe you can smell. Um, maybe someone's wearing like a perfume or something that you smell. Maybe a classmate. And last is taste. What can you taste? This one is a bit trickier because 
you might not always think, oh, I might not eat something in this place. <laughs> but just try to think, hmm, what's something that you might taste in this place? So, for example, in the park, maybe it's a picnic and maybe you might taste um, some fresh juice, like apple juice or uh, your favorite kind of juice. Maybe you can almost taste the salty air near an ocean. Maybe you can taste a baked good, like baked bread or baked uh, cookies or something. <laughs> okay. Let's see, does anyone have any questions so far or need help? Let's see, Sandy, how are you doing? Oh, I think I don't. All right, so let's hear, Sandy. What place did you choose? Uh, me? Yes. Okay, uh, I chose space. Space, yes. Okay, great. And Sandy, what did you write for some things you can see in space? A uh, like spaceship, star, planets, and alien. Very great, wonderful. And Sandy, what are some things that you can touch in space in your setting? Uh, maybe see the planets. I will feel I feel meaningful. Good. And how how do they feel when they touch when you touch them? Are they soft, hard? Uh, uh, I think it's hard. Hard. Is it? Um, you could also say, is it muddy? Is it dusty? What do you think the planet would be like? Uh, oh, I don't know. That's okay. So it's a good thing to think about hmm, when you're an astronaut or alien or any character, what do you, when they find this planet, what do you think that it will feel like for them? Okay. Maybe it, is it similar to touching sand or dirt or is it slimy? Is it muddy? So these are interesting questions to think about hmm and you can be creative great okay and how about what do you hear sandy what sounds are there uh i think the space is silence silence yes i wonder are does the astronaut talk to anyone oh yes maybe yes. Oh, good. So maybe there's some voices. And what does the alien sound like? Uh, uh, maybe the alien use another language. Another language? Oh, great. Wonderful. And then we can think about do they sound similar to us? Do they have a high pitched voice or a low pitched voice? Hmm, what does their language sound like? So these are questions we can ask ourselves to figure out what are the sounds in this setting? What can we hear? Hmm, maybe there's some sounds on the planet that you mentioned. Do you, or is, is do you think that might happen or is the planet also silent? 
um, I think the plan is maybe you make some sound. Make some sound. Mm. So that's something good to think about too. What kind of sounds? Maybe it's similar to Earth, or maybe not. Hmm. What do you think? Uh. Oh wow. Uh. And you can think about it more. Do you want to think about it some more? Oh yes. <laughs> yes, that's great. Yes. Absolutely. Let yourself think about it. Great. And Sandy, is there anything that any smells or tastes that you thought about? Uh, sp space food. Space food. Oh, do you think that tastes good or smells good? Uh, I don't think so. No, maybe. Yeah. Do you think your characters would like space food? Um, no. No. Um, have you ever tried space food, Sandy? Uh, no. <laughs> no, me neither. <laughs> <laughs> ah, so interesting to think about. Great. Nice job, Sandy. Great job. All right. And thank you for sharing. Okay, Ray. What do we, what setting did you choose? Uh, I choose uh, a city that called Matera. Oh, great. Wonderful. And what are some things that you see here? Uh, we can see hundreds of caves and rock church and a 14th century wall painting and uh, an immense water reservoir and sculptures. Wow, great. It sounds like a very beautiful place. Is it? Yes, it is. Great, wonderful. And what are some things that you can touch in this place? Uh, maybe uh, maybe we can touch stone columns. Good. And how do those feel? Are they hard or soft? Hot. Hard. Yeah. Cold or hot? Uh, it might be cold. <laughs> cold. Yeah. Great. Okay, great. Good to know. So, yes, temperature is also another thing we can all think about when we are in our settings. Are things cold? Are they hot? Are they somewhere in between? So, that's also a, a something to think about in our settings that helps us a bit and helps us describe a bit more what that place is like. Great. And Ray, what are some things you hear? What are some sounds in this setting? Uh, we can hear uh, traveler chat with each other. Oh, great. Are there many people in this place? Many travelers? It must be. Oh, say that one more time, Ray. Uh, it must be very travelers. Ah, oh, I see. What else might you hear? Uh, this place has a steep river valley, so we, we can hear the sound of river. Oh, the sound of a river. Great. Wonderful. And what are some things that you can smell here? Uh, uh, I'm not sure. Not sure. So let's think. Do maybe the travelers, do they have any food that they might carry that might have a smell? Or does the river have a smell to it? Mm. Uh. Oh, I think. 
uh, we can smell uh, uh, we can smell the smells of uh, the ancient caves. Oh yes, and is that a good smell? Do people like the smell? Mm. Uh, how how would you describe the smell? Uh, is it an, does it smell like something that's very old or something that's fresh? Uh something that fresh <laughs> something fresh uh not fresh not fresh yeah okay i can imagine how a old cave or ancient cave it, this the word that comes to my mind is musty which kind of smells old old smell <laughs> great and uh, Ray, is there any tastes that you thought of for your setting? Mm. It should be some Western food in uh, the local restaurant. Oh, OK, great. Wonderful. Is that a popular restaurant in this uh. setting? Uh, I haven't been there, so I, I need to search the answer. Oh, OK. Well, you can imagine, too, if you think yes or no, <laughs> it's up to you. Great job. OK, Leo, uh, where did you choose for your setting to be? Um, the house has many supernatural events. Oh, a house with many supernatural events. Great, I like it. And what are some things you, that you see here, Leo? Um, the, the Leo, I think you are. Oh, try about again. It. Yes, I can hear you now. Okay, um, maybe the strange house and some plants in the garden and many animals at the night. At the night. Uh, say it one more time, Leo. Um, maybe the strange house and some plants in the garden or many animals at the night. Oh, very good. So you have lots of different characters and other things that we see here great and i like how you mentioned at night so are there many dark colors in the story mm, yeah oh dark. yeah what which colors are there uh maybe all black all bl everything black um maybe some dark color like brown gray Oh, black, brown, and gray. Yes, so it sounds spooky. All right, great. And what are some things that you can touch in this setting? Um, and how do they feel? I think only can feel the cool wings blow. Say it one more time, Leo. Um, maybe some... Always brawl. <laughs> Sorry, Leo. One more time. I couldn't quite hear you. Okay. Wait a minute. We the cool wings brawl. All right. And Leo, what are some things that you can hear? Mm, the alcohol. 
Mm. One more time, Leo. Uh, the owl, owl calls. The owl calls, yes. Is there a many owls? Um, yeah. Oh, spooky. And what what is something else you might hear? Mm, um, maybe some girls in the house make sounds. Oh. Do they sound happy or sad or angry? How do they sound? Um, I think it's sad. Oh, they're sad. Oh. All right, very good. And Leo, are there any smells or tastes that you thought of in your setting? Um, I think in the house has the dead body, so they, they have strange smells in the house. Oh man, I, do you think that would smell good or no? No. <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> and how about tastes? Are there any tastes in your setting? Um, maybe not. I don't really have tastes. Mm. Do you think there's any food that the ghosts eat or any of the other characters? <laughs> maybe human. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. Oh, wow. Mm, sounds pretty spooky, Leo. <laughs> All right, great job. Does anyone have anything that they want to share about their story that anything else that they thought of for their setting that they didn't get to share? Let's see, Sandy, do you have anything else you want to share? Um, I think it's not. not. Oh, that's a great, okay. Uh, Ray, do you have anything else you want to share? Uh, no. No? Okay, great. And Leo, do you have anything else you want to share? Uh, no. No? Okay, great. So these are, we're going to continue working on these settings together. We'll think a bit more about uh, what we can add to them and start making a story a bit from them, okay? And you can continue to challenge your brain and get creative. You might think of more things that you can see, smell, uh, hear, touch, or taste in these settings. Okay. And it's always good to add or even subtract these things to help your story. All right. Great job, everyone. Okay. So let's continue creating our stories in our setting. So let's take a look at our next questions. And remember, these are our two questions that we talked about with our setting. So let's start right here. When? When does this story take place? Okay, so take a moment. Think about your setting. Okay, when does this story take place? Does it take place in the past? present or the future? Is there a specific season that it takes place in? Is that important? Or is it a time of day? All right, so take a moment to write it down. All right, you don't have to answer each of these things, but try to think of, hmm, when does this take place that seems important to my story? Okay. So for example, for my classroom story, I think it takes place in the present. And I think it takes place in the morning time. It might be any season. I don't know what season it is right now, and that's okay. But I think it's important to know that it takes place in the morning and it takes place in the present, not in the past and not in the future, okay? And for my park story, hmm, I think that the park, maybe the past or present, but I think it's very important to know that it takes place during the summertime. 
and in the afternoon. So I will focus on my park story is going to take place in the summertime. And it's going to take place in the afternoon. OK. All right. And next we will answer our where question. Where does this story take place? So we started talking about this a little bit. OK. So is it in a country or a land? Or maybe planet? You know, where? And we've talked about these a little bit so far. A climate or a specific place. So for my classroom, it's a specific place. We are in a school. So I can challenge myself and say, hmm, OK. What kind of school do I think it'll take place in? An elementary school? High school? College? I'm going to choose elementary school for a specific place. All right. And for my park? Hmm. I think this park is in England. It's a park in England in the summertime. Great. So let's think about that another minute. And then we can share. OK, Ray, are you ready? Uh, may, maybe. <laughs> it, take another minute. Uh, take your time. We'll give another minute or so. I love that you all have very different settings. It helps us. We can help each other out and be creative. Does anyone have any questions about either of these? Uh, questions? <laughs> Or does anyone need help? Mm. Leo, how are you doing? Um, I need to take a moment to do that. Is there anything we can help you with? Uh, I think I hit do it. OK, yeah, take some time to think. And Sandy, do you need any help? Um, no, no. OK, and Ray, do you need any help? Uh, no. No. OK. Great. <sighs> OK. Another moment. OK, Sandy, are you ready to share? Oh, yes. All right, great. So let's go back in our outer space with Sandy. OK, Sandy, when does the story take place? What did you think of? Uh, I think it's in the future. And I think season is not important to the story. And time of day. I think is in 2050. Oh, so is that the year? Uh, yes. Or, ah, yeah, 2050. Year. Great. So 
a bit into the future. So yeah. I wonder in the future, in that year, hmm, do you think thing life will be very different? Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. So that might be important to the story, right? Yes. Oh, great. Wonderful. And Sandy, let's see, where does your story take place? Uh, in the space. In space? Let's think, is it going to be in a different planet or on a spaceship or a few different places? Uh, they take a spaceship. Great. And is it a large spaceship, a small spaceship? What's a spaceship like? Um, larger. Large. Ooh. Is there many people on the spaceship? Uh, I think it's about 10. 10. Oh, wow. 10 people. Great. Wonderful. Anything else you want to share about where or when your story takes place? Uh, no. No? Okay, great. <laughs> Wonderful. Nice job, Sandy. Okay, Ray, are you ready to share? Uh, yes. Great. Okay, so Ray, when does your story take place? In the past. Oh, in the past. Uh, how long ago in the past? Was it a hundred years ago or more than that? What do you think? Uh, about uh, 200 years ago. Oh, very great. Wonderful. And is there any specific season or is that not important to your story? Mm. It's not important. Okay, great. And how about time of day? Or is that is there a time of day important to your story or no? Uh, the story lasts many days. <laughs> great. So most, many times a day. That's great. Wonderful. All right. So we know it's in the past 200 years ago. Wonderful. Okay, and how about where does the story take place? You told us a little bit. Can you tell us anything more? Uh, it is in a European country. European country. And is what's the weather like? Is it hot or cold? Is it rainy? What's the climate like? Mm. Uh, if it is in winter, uh, it will be rainy. Great. Wonderful. Nice job. And is there anything else you want to share about the where or when of your story, Ray? Uh, mm. The place is ancient K. Great. Yes, so that's a good uh, specific place for your story. Great. Wonderful. Nice job. Okay, Leo, are you ready to share? Uh, okay. Okay, Leo. When does your story take place? Um, in present. Oh, present day, great. Uh, is there any season or time of day that's important to your story? Um, I think season is not important, but time of day is very important. Uh, the night, uh, the feeling of creating the environment is very important. Oh, great. So I had a feeling that it might be nighttime <laughs> since you said it's yeah. very dark colors. That makes sense. 
great. Okay, and where does this story take place, Leo? Um, I think maybe in uh, Europe. Oh, okay. Is there a specific country you're thinking of or not yet? Um, maybe Italy. Oh, Italy. Very nice. Okay, great. Is there any other specific places in the story um, that you thought it, of? Uh, in the old castle. Ooh, old castle. Very good. Very spooky. <laughs> Very good. And is there anything else about when or where your story takes place that you want to share, Leo? Um, I think no. No? Okay. Mm. All right. So tomorrow I'm noticing the time. Uh, so we will wrap up. We, tomorrow we will continue talking about and creating our stories. So we have a few more questions that we can answer. And we will also start talking about different kinds of characters in stories. And we'll have some new vocabulary words that we'll learn about um, characters and the types of characters that we see. And we will start creating some ideas for our own characters that might be in our stories. Okay. Right. Do you, any of you have any questions? Uh, teacher. About, yes. Uh, uh, I, I need to go back to my school to get something tomorrow morning. So I, I can't uh, be in your class tomorrow. Oh, okay. We will miss you. And hopefully we'll see you sometime soon. Yes. <laughs> ah, okay. Well, you can still keep creating more ideas for your story, Ray, if you'd like, okay? Okay. Great. Wonderful. Does anyone else have any questions or anything they want to share? No? Okay. Well, I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. And Ray, good luck going to get what you need at your school, okay? Okay, thanks. You're welcome. All right, let's say thank you, teacher Bridget. Thank you. Thank you, teacher, teacher Bridget. Bridget. Thank you all. And I look forward to seeing you soon. Great job today. You did a wonderful job answering some questions, and some of them were tricky. So nice work. Okay, thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Have a good rest of your day. Bye. Bye. -bye.